Matisse often painted still lifes, and in these paintings he painted apples which he saw. Today you're going to paint a still life of some fruit in your house, and it's up to you what fruit. You need white paper, some crayons, watercolors if you have them. If you don't have watercolors, it's okay. Paint brushes, and a cup of water. First, using your crayons, I want you to decide what kind of fruit you want and where they're gonna stand. I'm creating a table, and on my table, my fruit will lie in the middle. Now, my picture is sort of like Matisse's in that the apples are in the foreground. Remember, objects in the foreground are in the front of the painting, and it's the main object you want everyone to see. I'm adding many apples and some in the background. And as I continue to work, I'm gonna go into the background and the middle ground. Make sure you add some details into your table. Next, using my crayons, I'm gonna fill in some of the areas. I'm not gonna fill it in all the way because I'm saving that area for painting. If you don't have paint, you can fill it all the way in with your crayons. And of course, like any other project we've done, if you want to use markers, use markers. If you wanna use pastels, use pastels. I do suggest, however, using some kind of a harder material, such as a pencil or a crayon, to get your drawing started. Then you can go into a softer material, such as a pastel or paint, to fill in the larger areas. I like to incorporate patterns in my art because Matisse was inspired by African patterns when he created his art. Don't forget your background. I often make my background one color as to not detract from the main picture. If you want to add a window in your background, that would be interesting too. Next, I'm going to begin painting with my watercolors. What I love about painting with watercolors and crayons is that I can paint right on top of those crayons and they're not going to smudge or smear because crayons are made of wax and water and wax do not mix together. We call that a resist and it's really nice to have them not mix together. Don't forget to fill in the areas around your apples. I'm using a darker color to represent the shadows that the apples are casting in the bowl. My table, I'm going to pick one color. Still using that same color around the edge of my table. As you guys are figuring out what you wanted to draw, you can pick fruit that's in your house. If you have oranges, create oranges. If you like pears, draw pears. They don't have to sit on a table. You can just draw the apples or pears by themselves. Maybe you have a whole fruit bowl of different objects. One of every fruit. Be inspired. And this is your jumping point to make things your own. And I can't wait to see what different creations you come up with. I'm still picking one color for my background. You know as much as I love to use every color of the rainbow, I still like to just pick one color for my background. Sometimes too many colors often take away from the main subject. I'm trying to find all those little spots I missed. I'm not too worried about staying in the lines as I'm an expressionist and I'm expressing my emotions. There you have it, all done. When you're finished, don't forget to sign your name at the bottom and snap a pic. Upload it online when you can. Bye guys, have fun.